Hello once again, welcome to the second and closing day of the FinTech Valley Spring Conference 2017. Over yesterday, we delved into various interesting and pertinent topics where eminent speakers and industry experts shared their valuable inputs and knowledge on what the future of FinTech and FinTech Valley could be. I'm sure each of you had something useful to take back from the sessions held yesterday. We also managed to witness various startup challenge teams who devised and delivered impeccable plans and innovative problem-specific solutions that can be executed for various institutions and companies. Today holds equal importance with our upcoming panel discussions, conferences, and talks on the finance sector and its infrastructure in India, and that will be followed by the closing address. Our first session today is with a very special guest, Mr. J. Satyanarayana, advisor to the government and chairperson of the UIDAI, who will join us via live video conference and give us his perspective on e-pragati and e-governance. E -pragati, the Andhra Pradesh State Enterprise Architecture is a new paradigm in e-governance. It, it is a whole of government framework that adopts a mission-centric approach to implementation. Mm -hmm. E-Pragati seeks to help realize the vision of Sunrise AP 2022 by enabling design and delivery of services in a coordinated, integrated, efficient, and equitable way that citizens and business deserve. We will now hear from Mr. J. Satyanarayana, Advisor to the Government and Chairman UIDAI. Mr. Satyanarayana, over to you, sir. Thank you and uh, good morning to all the participants and delegates present uh, in the FinTech Spring Conference. Uh, I'm happy to be with you this morning, virtually, though, because of some personal emergency, I had to stay back and uh, take recourse to tech, some form of technology so that we could still share our thoughts. So I'm, uh, I've had a feedback that the conference is going on well, and yesterday the Honorable Chief Minister also addressed all of you uh, through this uh, medium. And uh, my colleague, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Bhaskaraniam, made a presentation on the Projects. So I do not want to spend more time on that, except to say that it's one of the largest programs of its kind in the country at this point. Because the idea is that we have had projects implemented on a one on one basis in the past, and we are trying to experiment with this enterprise architecture model in e as you would have noticed in the presentation yesterday uh, by Bal Subramanian. So we have a portfolio of 72 projects covering the whole spectrum of, uh, you know, all the sectors in the economy and the state. They are all under the hood, they are all integrated to a core uh, platform of e -Pragati. So uh, as I'm talking, you know, we are going to roll out the RFPs uh, for the core uh, uh, platform to be designed and uh, developed, which is a very exciting opportunity uh, I consider because it has immense possibilities in the e-governance space uh, all over, not only in India, but elsewhere. So there is also a financial management component, uh, financial transaction management component also in the core package, as you would have seen yesterday. In addition, we are also going to roll out very shortly in the span of uh, a week or max two, uh, a few other RFPs in the primary sector and also uh, the performance uh, management, uh, which is both management and, you know, the program management of the government. Uh, so it's a very exciting uh, time to be in. And we have, uh, our government has declared the next financial year starting last April as the year of e -pragati. So that the entire machinery of the government will be behind this in a unified manner. Uh, so that, you know, within a period of 12 months, we are able to produce results on the ground. That, uh, that is about e -pragati, which throws up a lot of opportunities uh, to the industry and to the uh, even startups because one interesting feature which uh, I would like to mention here is all API-based, open API-based 
uh, architecture we are preparing for the deep parity, which means that in the various sectors like healthcare, education, and rural development, uh, and so many other sectors of the government, the, the each package would would, uh, would publish its uh, APIs in a place called App Store, AP, AP for Andhra Pradesh, App Store. Uh, so, so that you know the enterprise uh, uh, element can be really given a, a very good open window there. With the help of these APIs, you can develop a, a number of innovative solutions which uh, are more citizen friendly and more useful to citizen. Obviously, the government in its own package, the education package or healthcare package or agriculture package cannot envision or visualize all the use cases which will be useful to the uh, citizens and to the stakeholders. So a number of interesting business models can evolve around uh, you make use of these APIs. That is, uh, I would request you to honestly have a look at the literature on e parity that is available and also upcoming to the RFPs in the, in the March. I would like to say a few words about uh, Aadhaar, uh, which I'm currently heading uh, in India. And this is uh, the, the largest uh, biometric ID platform in the whole world. As you know, with uh, 1.12 billion uh, Aadhaars having been issued, uh, it's a mammoth uh, exercise done over the last six years. And uh, huge infrastructure has been built to support this uh, kind of a uh, never before kind of uh, uh, phenomenon called Aadhaar. So this entire 1.12 billion uh, records uh, with, uh, with all the kind of security and privacy have been protected. It resides in our two big data centers, one at Bangalore and one at Manesha in Haryana. Uh, in an active, active mode, we have about 7,000 servers as, uh, you know, uh, clusters, uh, which are handling various aspects of Aadhaar, including enrollment, Authentication. Every day we get currently 20 million hits every day. And, uh, you know, it is uh, designed to handle uh, 100 million a day. But currently we are at 20 million capacity in terms of the number of hits. That means when, whenever any person anywhere in the country to receive a pension or to receive the ration, puts his or her thumb on the biometric device, it goes all the way to our data center in Bangalore slash Manesha gets validated and then the transaction goes through. It's like when, I, when you swipe your credit card, it gets validated and then the payment gets done. So, uh, like manner across various sectors, including telecom sector, health sector, so many, uh, also government, so many welfare programs, they're all linked to Aadhaar currently. And uh, current uh, hitting rate is, uh, uh, as I said, 20 billion a day. Uh, which with capacity of 10 million, uh, 100 million, and we are going to take uh, increase it four times uh, in the next few months. That is our refresh plan. Uh, we, we are going to take it to, uh, you know, 400 million a day, because the cashless economy that the Honorable Prime Minister has uh, embarked upon for the country. So it is going to scale up the requirement of authentication. Uh, in, a, in a big way. So, in advance of that, because we can't wake up in the 11th hour and say that, you know, there is choking of the uh, servers of Aadhaar. So, we have in the last board meeting, uh, we have decided that we enhance the capacity of uh, uh, authentication capacity of our Aadhaar uh, infrastructure four times, uh, which is, uh, you know, uh, 400 million a day. Uh, which means even if half the population of the country, uh, active population, does the at least one transaction a day, we are in a position to handle that. So th that is uh, the on the infrastructure side, and it's a huge, uh, uh, you know, opportunity that we are seeing that it will kick off in the fintech area, because the the, the focus is not only on uh, the providing better services to the citizens through Aadhaar, but also to give a big support to the cashless economy that we are aspiring for in India. So this is going to play a key role 
And as I mentioned earlier, you can integrate this. Aadhaar is a, it's one of the classic examples of an ecosystem that has been built on open APIs. You can just go on to Aadhaar site and download uh, any number of uh, APIs that are useful uh, uh, in order to build applications in this space. So this open ecosystem is uh, well proven and established. And uh, I, I must pay my personal compliment to uh, Mr. Nandan Nilekani, who was who's, who, whose brain idea it was, brainchild in terms of you know the design of the entire ecosystem. So it's a really very robust, secure, and highly scalable system. Uh, not only done by Athar itself, but ten times the work is done outside by the ecosystem players. So that's how I, I would uh, see the opportunity in the Athar space as such. And uh, these two interventions I just wanted to, these two major, I, I would say, uh, ventures that the government is promoting or implementing uh, as I speak. Uh, so I want to bring to you a kind notice that one is on the, in the Andhra Pradesh itself, we have the e-pragati portfolio and at the national scale, we have the Aadhaar as the, uh, you know, foundation for uh, the FinTech. So with these few words, uh, I would like to thank all of you for your uh, time and attention. And I, uh, I think we can spend uh, some time uh, if you have any observations from your side. Thank you. And uh, I make it over to uh, Richard. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Satyanarayana. Thank you very much for taking the time. We wish you all the best with your work at UIDAI. OK, all right. Uh, we will also take a few questions from the audience, Mr. Satinarena. Uh, we have yes. mics in the audience. Uh, yeah, can we get a mic here? Could you stand up, sir, so we can identify you? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, sir. Hello. Good morning, sir. Uh, one question morning. to you is uh, recently uh, uh, UIDAI has issued some uh, notification saying that the sub AUA, KUA, uh, registrations from the startups will now also require UIDAI approval. Now, the guidelines on what you would want to see, etc., have not come out. So this leaves a gap in uh, in that framework, where in you know what is supposed to be given, who can now expect that to be approved, and you know how should they go about it. So uh, you know uh, some clarity will be helpful. Thank you. Absolutely, I think we'll print the, the main concern, more of, of course, perception is you know one of security of all the transactions and privacy of the information. So going forward, what society uh, as a party, in fact, we will do the regime of registered devices. Uh, an ecosystem of devices uh, which are registered with the authority uh, in a particular manner. So that, you know, it's not an open-ended access that is being uh, provided across the country. And for every transaction, some person uh, who is accountable uh, so through a registered device. Uh, previous current system is that instead of uh, registering the device, not uh, involved currently, but given the importance and the history of the whole issue, security and privacy angle, this uh, registered device management system is uh, being used from uh, 1st of June. So as a precursor, we have uh, said that uh, uh, two possibilities exist at the uh, AUA level, which is uh, level zero and level one. Level zero is a software-based solution, which you have to only download, so that it enable the uh, new uh, regime to be introduced into a system. And the second one is, which is a slightly more time-taking one, is uh, level one, which is a hardware-based uh, solution to the problem. The problem being that there should be no